It's another anxious night on the East Coast as heavy rain sets in yet again, sparking further evacuations and more flooding. Tairawhiti remains in a state of emergency, the region's third this year alone. The red heavy rain warning continues until Sunday. It's a cruel blow for farmers who told Perry Wilson they're really struggling now. Wheels spinning, churning mud. Gisborne farmers today trying to make the best of a bad situation. That is too wet. We can't get on them to get the produce in the ground, really. Pretty simple. The region can't catch a break. Two cyclones this year alone and now a red heavy rain warning in place until Sunday. The state of emergency is feeling very real for farmers like Matt, desperate to drain their paddocks. We're just trying to save what we can and keep the cost of produce down, I suppose, you know, because we're going to get to a point where the cost is going to go through the roof. Countdown today released a statement warning key produce suppliers are facing issues getting goods out of Tairawhiti and customers may see shortages of salads, broccoli and mandarins. And it's not just produce getting hit hard by the rain. What we're seeing here, right behind us, is land that's had enough. Slips have not just torn through roading and closed every state highway out of Gisborne. It's made farming sheep and cows near impossible. Not only can you hear the constant trickling of water coming from this hillside, what looks like solid ground is actually just sludgy ooze. So farmers are just a bit demoralised. I think I've worn my work boots on farm maybe two days this year. And we're six months into the year. Normally you would be your gum boots two or three days, you know, maybe a week in your gum boots, but it's been just unrelenting. It's a fatigue that's deep rooted here. Rising river levels have forced dozens of evacuations in the last 24 hours, and locals have had enough. It's been going on for quite a long time now. But... From Cyclone Gabriel and Cyclone Hale, already have uh, trauma responses. Got a trip on Monday, don't think I'll be able to make it due to this weather, and it's overall just depressing, really. The weather is f***ing terrible. Sheep have been moved to higher ground because the paddocks where they should graze are more suited to swans. Farmers are feeling really tough, find it really hard, and it's OK to not be OK. Williams says at a time like this, people have got to look after each other and call their neighbours. And with more bad weather to come, all farmers can do is... Just keep rolling. <laughs> keep rolling with the blows. <laughs> blows the community here are finding harder to stomach. So, Perry, it seems the rain you were expecting tonight has just arrived. Yeah, good evening, Janneke. This rain is expected to bucket down like this from now until Sunday, especially up the east coast past Tolaga Bay and Tokamaru Bay. The soil here in Gisborne is well past saturation point, so signs like these behind me are becoming far more commonplace. Civil Defence even sent out an educational advisory today, giving people a heads up about what they might expect if their property starts coming down the hillside. People have been told to look out for retaining walls out of place, doors that are stuck or even just creaking noises could be a warning sign. We've spoken to so many people here in Gisborne today who have just had a guts full. They're sick to death of this weather and with the state highway still closed and people hunkering down tonight in evacuation centres, that cabin fever is setting in. Well, Heather's in now with more on this rain event. So, Heather, what's causing all this rain? Well, we've been tied up in this northeasterly flow for the last few days, and the low pressure system to the top of the country is feeding back down over the northeast, prolonged and heavy rain. It's coastal and it's in the ranges, and with such sodden soils out east, this rain is problematic. Now, tonight's rain will mean that Gisborne will have received its entire annual rainfall in less than six months, joining Auckland and Napier, all which have had a year's worth of rain so far. I'll have more on the warnings after sport.